Today we'll move on to a new topic, which is kinetics. If you remember, at the beginning of this semester, I tell you that there are three fundamental questions that chemistry needs to answer. Given a chemical reaction, for example, A plus B goes to C and D. Well, the very first question you should ask is, can this reaction really happen, or can it proceed? Following that, if that can happen, you want to ask to what extent will it happen. In other words, how much of the react reactants has been uh, converted to the products? Is it 20%, 30%, or 80%? Well, the last question is, how fast will this chemical reaction go? Does it take, take it one second, or one minute, or one, one hour, or a day for this reaction to reach equilibrium? The first two questions have already been addressed by thermodynamics. Uh, specifically, we have introduced the Gibbs free energy at constant temperature and pressure. Now, if you recall, thermodynamics only concerns the initial and final state of the reaction, and there's no information about how fast the reaction will go. So we have to uh, devote a separate topic and develop a new machinery to address this issue, which is the central topic of kinetics, which is the study of the reaction rate. Now let me bring back the old plot that you're all familiar with, which I introduced to you based on the chemical equilibrium. Is the production of ammonia using hydrogen and nitrogen? Here I'm plotting the concentration as a function of time. I'll be only plotting nitrogen gas and ammonium gas. Now in the equilibrium lecture, the emphasis was on at some time, the, each of the chemical species will remain constant and we emphasize the state of equilibrium. And you know that if the species, they are no longer changing in terms of concentration, they have reached the equilibrium state. However, the kinetics consider the whole course, the whole journey of, react of the reactions, whereas thermodynamics only concern the initial and final state, and ignoring all, all of these intermediate steps, kinetics concerns all these processes. Each point, each time point, counts on this curve. Specifically, can I ask a question like this? If you have a, pick a specific interval of time, it asks the question of how much the product, how much the product is being reproduced in that interval of time. Now, you could also ask similar questions, how much of the reactant is being used during that short interval of time. And in fact, to get, you can see, to get a complete picture of a chemical reaction, thermodynamics and kinetics should go hand in hand. Now, reaction, reaction rate varies greatly from reaction to reactions. So let me give you some examples considering these time scales of different reactions. Now, time scale, roughly speaking, means that how long does it take a chemical reaction to reach an equilibrium? On one hand, you have very fast chemical reactions, and on the other end of the spectrum, you have very slow chemical reactions. For example, the neutralization of acid and base is a fast reaction. 
just by looking at this reaction, probably you can sort of uh, speculate why this is the case. A proton is a very light particle. It's the lightest uh, uh, chemical species besides electron. So once this hydrogen, this proton, is get, uh, getting into contact with that hydroxide, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stick to that negative charge uh, oxygen with no problem. Analog analogously, the precipitation reaction is a fast reaction as well. Now, of course, explosions. Explosions are fast reactions, extremely fast. And not all explosions are necessarily bad. Some, for example, the airbag that you are using in your car, we're using this explosion to do good things. It's a mixing of two solid, sodium azide and potassium uh, nitrate to generate nitrogen gas. And in fact, this reaction happens so fast, it's on the order of microsecond. Just to remind you, one microsecond is 10 to negative six second, which is one per million. If the car detects that you are decelerating at alarming speed, then a spark is, is gonna trigger this reaction. And in fact, no mechanical pump can inflate the airbag as fast as this chemical reaction does. So on the other side of the spectrum, you have very slow reactions. For example, if you look at the, the glass window, uh, the equilibrium, equilibrium state for that glass is actually a crystal. So the glass is in non-equilibrium state, it's slowly evolving towards this equilibrium state of crystal. But we have never seen in our lifetime that a glass turned into crystal which becomes opaque and scattered light. Because that glass to crystal transition is, is so slow that we don't have, a, have to worry about it. Another example is if you put hydrogen and oxygen together, you mix them together, and at room temperature, they will stay there for years without even producing a drop in water. So at room temperature, these two mixtures are very, very stable. Now, of course, you have some reactions that lie in the intermediate range. For example, the redox reactions. I'm going to do a electron transfer reaction where you use tin to reduce iron. So in this reaction, iron is being reduced and the tin is being oxidized. The physical process is that electron is hopping from tin to, uh, to iron. You can imagine that not every collision or, or not every encounter is, a, is effective at uh, making that electron jump from tin to, uh, to, uh, to iron. So that effective uh, electron transfer, that, that event may be rare. Another example I want to remind you is that uh, this reaction, you just did this in your lab last week, is the esterification reaction where you make the, the ester that smells like winter green. And you didn't get the smell immediately, uh, immediately after you mix the, these two, the, uh, uh, silly, uh, the carboxylic acid and the, uh, the, the alcohol. You wait for five minutes before the, the smell came out. And because you know these molecules, looks, they look a little bulky, and to make the chemical reaction go in, they have to arrange themselves in a specific you know, configuration to get that reaction going. So I think I have convinced to you that uh, the chemical reaction can happen on an enormous range of time scale. Although this is the case, the beauty of the Kanagi theory is that all of these chemical reactions can be cast into a unified framework, a unified mathematical expression, which will be investigated in our next session.